Hey there. If you're watching this video, then I have a feeling you've been holding off from buying a new iPhone, even if Apple announced pretty amazing iPhone 10s and 10s Max about a month ago. And chances are, you've been waiting for this more affordable iPhone, the iPhone XR. Well, you're not alone. In fact, I have a hunch that even more folks will be inclined to buy this phone this year, even if it comes with some compromises. But do these adjustments that make the iPhone XR $250 cheaper make it any less of an iPhone? Or is it still a big bang for your buck? Hi, I'm Michael Josh. You're watching Gadget Match, and this is our iPhone XR review. Let me preface this video by saying that even if the iPhone XR is reminiscent of the plasticky iPhone 5C from many years ago because of its cheaper price tag and colorful options, this phone is in no way a budget phone. It's still very much premium. Here, take a look at its design. All glass with an aluminum frame, very much like the iPhone 8 from last year, just not with all the cutting edge features of the iPhone XS. In the hands, it feels solid with just the right amount of heft to it. Plus, it's available in a variety of colors. So apart from black and white and product red, it's also available in blue, yellow and coral, which are in more pastel colors. Our review device is white, but we're really fans of product red. Now let's begin by taking a look at what makes the iPhone XR different from the high-end iPhone XS Max. While roughly the same size, the iPhone XR has just a slightly smaller display. It's got an LCD panel versus OLED. Apple has a fancy name for it, Liquid Retina. If we were to nitpick, it's got a lower resolution screen and bigger bezels. Yep, those bezels bug me a bit. Oh, and it doesn't have 3D touch. You know, that feature that debuted on the iPhone 6S when you press gently to peak and then deeper to pop. I think the lower resolution display is what throws off most folks and has got many tech journalists talking. While I would have loved more pixel density on this device, most users won't be able to tell the difference. And I don't think it's the deal breaker that some may make it out to be. Not to sound like an Apple apologist, but iPhones have always been known for good displays. And this still holds true on the iPhone XR. I don't wanna bore you with fancy tech terms, but there's a lot going on under the hood to make sure you get a good experience even if on paper, it doesn't seem to be. Even the tech needed to pull off these rounded corners deserves some props. The display is sufficiently bright with good colors, both indoors and outside under the sun. It's got the same true tone technology as on the XS, meaning it will shift its color to adjust the lighting conditions in your room. Oh, and in case you're wondering, you can still watch 1080p videos on YouTube. Netflix looks fine as well. Instead of two cameras, the iPhone XR has only one. So you're not getting the two times zoom lens that's on the XS and the XS Max, but you're getting the same exact standard camera. What does this mean? It means that you get the same great photos we raved about when we reviewed the iPhone XS. The same smart HDR tech that lets you shoot against the light and still come up with photos like this. And the same low light performance. You still get portrait mode though, although instead of relying on that second camera to measure depth, the iPhone XR relies solely on software to separate the subject from the background. Cutouts are pretty much the same, it's just the quality of the bokeh that's different. See here in this example. But having said that, now that there ain't a zoom lens, when you take portraits, they aren't zoomed in by default, which was one of my peeves with the portrait mode on the iPhone. Our subjects also end up sharper and less soft on the XR, which we actually like better. Speaking of portraits, you only have three of the five portrait lighting features. You're missing stage light and stage light mono, and you still get depth control, the ability to adjust the amount of blur after taking a shot, one of our favorite new features debuted on the iPhone XS. See here, you can pick from F1.4, the creamiest blur, to F16, no background blur. The front camera is exactly the same as well, so selfies are going to be top notch.
In case you're not familiar, housed in the notch is a true depth system. A selfie camera, depth sensor, and fancy tech like a dot projector and IR illuminator that measure the contours of your face. With it, you can do things like portrait mode, an emoji and memoji, and more importantly, Face ID, your primary way of unlocking your device. You just lift your phone and swipe up to unlock. There's no fingerprint sensor anymore, so if you're upgrading from an older iPhone, you're going to have to get used to this kind of way of unlocking your device. It might take some getting used to, but trust me, after relying on it for about a year now, I don't miss the fingerprint sensor as much as I thought I would. Now that you don't have a home button anymore, you'll also need to get used to new gestures. Swipe up for home, swipe up and hold for multitasking, swipe down from the right side for the control center, and swipe down from the left for the notification shade. Speaking of swiping, the iPhone XR also has a haptic engine, which gives you subtle buzzes when you do things like swipe up or a long press to delete an app. It's a tiny feature that makes the experience more rich because it feels less like you're interacting with a sheet of glass. While Apple doesn't include this in their official spec sheet, the iPhone XR has a slightly smaller battery than on the XS Max, but it has the longest claimed battery life on an iPhone to date. In our time with the phone, the iPhone XR lasts at about a day of normal use. It also supports wireless charging. And if you're willing to shell out some extra dough, you have the option for a fast charger that can go from zero to 50 in 30 minutes. Everything else about the iPhone XR is as good as its more expensive brothers. It runs on the same A12 Bionic chip that's speedy and powerful and can handle whatever tasks you throw at it. Games like Fortnite run smooth. Augmented reality games like AR Robot do too. It's water and dust resistant, albeit as always, water damage is not included in your warranty, so don't take your iPhone swimming. Just know that you're protected in case of rain and or spills. So, is the iPhone XR your gadget match? If you're in the market for a new phone and have been holding off, the iPhone XR is a strong candidate. And starting at just under $750, it's an easy one to recommend to anyone looking to upgrade. Its main differences are its LCD display and single camera, none of which are deal breakers. In fact, unless you've ever had an iPhone with a zoom lens, then you won't know what you're missing. I personally am a fan of zoom, but I have many friends that couldn't care less if they didn't have one. Everything else is the same great premium iPhone experience. Are there better Android smartphones out there for the same price? Maybe, but better and best are subjective. And if you're an iOS user, we're thrilled that you now have an option as good as this in the same price point. And for that, we give the iPhone XR the gadget match seal of approval. If you have the money to spend or can get a good deal with your carrier, then why not get the iPhone XS or even the XS Max? If you're really penny pinching, it's worth mentioning the iPhone 8 Plus is $699. You get a better display, just not edge to edge. No face ID, last year's camera tech, but you get that 2x zoom lens. But for everyone else, the iPhone XR is a phone that we wholeheartedly recommend. I wouldn't be surprised even if it becomes the most popular iPhone of the year. And that was our iPhone XR review. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on that bell icon so that you get notified every time we post a new video. Follow us on social media and make GadgetMatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.